Well, well, well. Who do we have here? You guys have heard of Elf on the Shelf. You've heard of Dick in a Box. Well, here is Bitch in a Bag. This is Emily. This is my mother's 19-year-old cat who I am babysitting this week while she has some work done at her house. And she's miserable. In fact, we have a lot in common. She hates people. She'll bite you if you get too close. She hates everything. In fact, I'm pretty sure the best day of her life was the day that I moved out of my mom's house. And well, guess what? Psych, I'm back. Say hi, Emily. I think this is the closest that I've gotten to her without her trying to bite me ever. So in last week's video, we talked about every boomer's favorite catchphrase of the year. Nobody wants to work. And we discussed all the reasons why that may or may not be true and may or may not be valid. But one of the points that I made in that video that I want to dive into a little bit deeper today is the idea that the freelance side hustle gig economy has completely revolutionized the opportunities that we all have to make a real living. With a little bit of creativity and ingenuity, I really do believe that everybody has the ability to earn $50 an hour or more just by learning to leverage their skills and market themselves just a little bit. And so in this video, I'm going to share with you 25 ideas for freelance gigs or side hustles that can earn you $50 per hour or more and require no degree, no formal education at all actually, and no specific qualifications. And these are things that I would recommend if they pique your interest to start them off on a side hustle basis and see if you can build them up into a business. You really never know how large you can scale these things. And yes, some of these are things people do full time to make a full-time living. So I'm gonna preface this right now by saying that if one of the jobs that I list is what you do for a living and it's your artistry and it's your craft and it's something you've studied a long time for and practiced a lot, don't come at me, calm your tits. I'm not saying that anybody can just walk off the streets and knock you off your pedestal. I'm just saying that these are jobs that anybody can learn how to do and they're skills that a lot of people already have and just aren't marketing properly. With that said, let's jump into it. So the very first freelance gig that I wanna talk about is something that a lot of us have already done at different points in our lives, and that is painting homes. If you've ever repainted your own bedroom or your own apartment, you'll know that it's honestly not the most complicated thing in the whole world. Where I live here in Toronto, the average going rate for hiring a painter is about three to $500 per room, depending on the size of the room. And if you've done this before, you know it's not the most time consuming thing ever. You prep the walls, you paint them, you let them dry, you come back, you put another coat, and boom, you're pretty much good to go. And so even if you're charging on the low end at $300 for a room, and if it takes you a total of five hours of labor to do it, that's $60 an hour. Not too shabby. Freelance idea number two is detailing cars. And this one you can actually operate in one of two ways. You can either have people bring their cars to you and clean them at your place, or you can even charge them a premium and go to them and clean their car on their driveway or in the parking lot where they work. The average going rate to have your car detailed around here is about $300 and it goes up from there depending on how dirty your car is or how big of a vehicle you drive. And knowing that an average detailing takes three to four hours, you're looking at easily 75 to $100 an hour for detailing cars. Side hustle number three is one that I've actually done personally in the past. I actually used to do this when I was in high school when everybody else was working like fast food and retail jobs. I taught private music lessons. Private music lessons are amazing because if you play an instrument of any degree, whether it's a guitar, drums, piano, even if you're a good singer, chances are you quite enjoy doing that. And so teaching it to other people is a pretty easy job. The thing that a lot of people don't realize is that you don't even have to be a professional. You don't have to be super skilled. You only have to be a little bit better than the person you're teaching. So truthfully, I'm a pretty mediocre guitar player at best, but I taught mostly young kids and complete beginners. And so I was quite a bit better than they were. And even back then at 16 years old, I was charging $30 per half hour or $60 per hour. And I know rates have gone up since then to about $40 per half hour or $80 per hour. And even more so if you travel to the client versus them coming to you. So again, 80 bucks an hour to play your instrument of choice not too bad. And on a similar wavelength, idea number four is to teach cooking classes. Once again, you absolutely don't have to be a professional chef. If you're just a really solid home cook, well, guess what? There's a lot of people who aren't and who will pay you good money to teach them to make tasty food at home. You can do this in a group setting, you can do it one-on-one, -on -one, or you can even do it over Zoom. But from what I've seen, the average rate to attend a cooking class is between $100 and $150 per class, and that class can be one to two hours in length. So you're looking at a minimum of $75 an hour. Something that I don't think a lot of people realize is that teaching, especially in the context of private instruction, can be very lucrative, regardless of what the skill is that you're teaching. If you've ever hired a private instructor or taken lessons of any sort on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you know that 50 to 100 or even $200 an hour is not at all unheard of. Like Jack Black always says, Those that can't do, teach. And those that can't teach, teach gym. And so the best part of all is that everybody has some sort of skill or hobby that they're good enough at that they can teach to somebody else. So quickly, here's some other ideas. You can teach kids to ride bikes or skateboards or play pretty much any sport and easily you're gonna be looking at 50 to $100 an hour. I know that most of us, myself included, learned to ride a bike with our parents holding on to the back of our seat, but there's a lot of people who have more money than they have time and patience and you can definitely take advantage of that. Similarly, if you're a good swimmer, you can give private swimming instructions in people's homes in their personal pools. That's $100 plus an hour. Jump, 
And probably the most obvious would be tutoring and academics. Again, you don't have to have a university degree in any of these subjects, but if you're decent at math or science or writing or whatever, you can help elementary school kids and high school kids to improve their grades and you can earn 50, 60, $75 an hour for private tutoring, no problem. All right, I think we've bled the tutoring and teaching category dry. Let's move on to something different. Side hustle number eight is home cooking, home baking, and meal prep. If you look online on Facebook Marketplace or in local Facebook groups, you'll see that there are tons of people who sell their homemade food, sell their homemade baked goods, sell their meal prep kits. They do this all themselves at home and people are happy to pay for them. Dishes that cost one to $2 in ingredients can easily be sold for 10 to $15 per portion and you can make them in big batches and cut them up and portion them out and basically be making easily 50 to $100 per hour for your time just by selling your food online. I never really thought people would wanna buy home cooked meals from a stranger, but apparently they do. I don't really know what happened to the whole like don't take candy from strangers thing, but hey, here we are, welcome to 2022. Side hustle number nine is one that I've talked a lot about on this channel in the past, and it is flipping, or also known as online arbitrage. I know Gary Vee has been talking about garage sales a lot and people have been giving him shit for it, but to be honest with you, he is totally right. Flipping basically refers to going and buying something and then reselling it at a higher price. And it's something I've personally been doing as a side hustle for the last five plus years. And I've made a lot of money doing it, I'm not gonna lie. For example, this right here is an electric drum set that I picked up earlier this week. I paid $500 for the set with the amplifier and I can probably sell it for around $900. So nice $400 profit. But you can go to garage sales, you can go to thrift stores, you can look on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and just buy things at a low price and resell them online. I personally won't buy anything that I can't make at least $50 on, but there have been times when I've made significantly more than that. And really the only time you have to input is just driving to go pick things up and bring them back home and maybe a little bit of negotiating on the internet. It's not a huge deal. On the low end, I'll make $50 for an hour of work. On the high end, I've made up to six or $700 for an hour or less of work as well. Best of all is I just personally find it to be really, really fun. Freelance side hustle gig number 10 is assembling Ikea furniture or other similar things like that. There are a lot of people who just simply don't have the patience to deal with this kind of thing. And what's really important here and what I hope you take away from this video, if nothing else, is that there are a lot of skills that realistically everybody has, but not everybody has the patience or desire to execute on their own. And you can absolutely take advantage of those things and charge a premium for your time. If you've ever assembled Ikea furniture in the past, which probably most of us have, You'll know that it can be a little bit frustrating at times, but it's not really all that difficult. And again, at minimum, you're gonna be able to charge $50 an hour for your time. Similarly, idea number 11 is what I'm gonna call light handiwork. Basically, if you look around somebody's home, there's often like just little jobs, little tasks here and there that need to be done. Things that are not objectively difficult, but that are maybe a little bit annoying or time consuming and that some people just can't be bothered to tinker with on their own and they're happy to pay somebody to do it for them. Things like installing light fixtures or even sometimes changing light bulbs. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I've seen it asked for before online. People asking if someone can come out and change a light bulb for them. Uh, hanging pictures or mirrors on the wall, installing towel bars or toilet paper holders. Just little things like that, which again, are not terribly difficult. You don't have to be an electrician to change a light fixture. I've done it myself many times, yada, yada, yada. Most handy people have a minimum fee that they charge just to go to the person's home, regardless of the simplicity of the job. And that fee can range from $50 on the low end up to over $100 on the high end, meaning that even if it's a five minute job, you're gonna get paid at minimum, whatever your minimum charge is. And then depending on what the people need and how much work you have to do, you charge them from there. But typically speaking, you're gonna be making a couple hundred dollars per hour on average. Side hustle freelance gig number 12 is gonna be shoveling snow, cutting lawns, and general landscaping work. Again, yes, I know that there are landscapers out there who will say like, I'm a professional, good for you, all good, not knocking it, relax. There's a kid who lives in my neighborhood who mows lawns all summer. The lawns take him about 20 minutes. He charges $30 per lawn or up, depending on how big of a property you live on. And that means that he's making like $90 an hour on average for his labor or more. And listen, he's 12 years old or 13 years old. If he can do it, literally anybody can do it. So shovel snow, cut grass, trim trees, whatever it is that you're comfortable doing, easily 50 to $100 an hour or more depending. In lieu of not making this video like an hour long, we're gonna move through the next few fairly quickly. Power washing is gonna be number 14. You can rent a power washer or buy a power washer and you can charge people. My mom had somebody quote her last week, $250 to power wash her deck. She told them promptly to shove it in the nicest way possible. I'm sure she didn't tell them to shove it. But the point is that would have been like 30 minutes of work for $250. You can power wash people's decks, driveways, the siding of their houses, what have you. Hey, just one quick thing before we move on. If you're finding any value in this video, if any of these ideas have piqued your interest, do me a quick solid, please hit that like button. Thank you. 
Number 14 is cleaning houses and offices. Again, this isn't a skill that most people need to acquire. Most people are perfectly capable of dusting, vacuuming, mopping, that kind of thing, scrubbing toilets. Not necessarily the most glamorous, but the truth is you can make decent money doing it. The average house, depending on the size of it, of course, can be anywhere between two and $400 a week for a clean. And if it takes you even three to five hours, well, you do the math it's pretty good money all around. Number 15 is probably gonna ruffle a few feathers. And so I'm gonna start this off by saying that yes, it is a skill that you most likely don't have today and that you would have to learn, but it's something that you don't need a formal education or any qualifications to do. And you can learn by yourself online and just through practicing hands-on and it is grooming dogs. Yes, I know I'm gonna blow your mind right now most likely, but the person who grooms your dog, the person that you pay hundred dollars to for like two hours of work does not have a degree most likely, probably just learned how to do it by learning how to do it by just learning with somebody else or just practicing on their own dog or practicing on their friends and their family's dogs. And over time you get better and better at it. I'm not saying this is an easy job. I'm not saying that it is a fun job. It can be very difficult. It can be very dirty, but the fact remains that this is a job that you don't need a degree for. You don't have to have any formal qualifications for, and it can easily earn you six figures a year. If grooming dogs isn't your thing, I certainly don't blame you. It's absolutely not my thing either, but it is lucrative. With that said, another idea is dog walking, and it's definitely a little bit less dirty and less difficult. The average going rate for a private dog walk, meaning you just take one person's dog at a time and take them out, is $30 per 30 minute walk. So that's $60 an hour. If you offer group walks where you take multiple dogs, you can charge them about $20 per hour and take as many dogs as you can manage, which can easily be 60 to 80 to even $100 per hour. And it's really not a bad job, especially in the summer months, to just get outside and be active. It saves you money at the gym as well. Another similar idea that you can do is pet boarding or pet sitting. Uh, and once again, there's two different ways you can do this. You can either bring people's dogs into your home and the average going rate, at least here where I live, for in-home pet boarding is about $75 a night. So if you bring in, once again, three or four dogs, you're making a good couple hundred dollars for not having to do a ton. Uh, you can also offer it as an option to go to the person's home, stay in their home with their dog, and you can charge a premium for that because then it's one-on-one -on -one boarding and people will pay a lot of money to have their pets well taken care of. So if you like animals, it can be a great business. And for anybody who's not scared of doing the less glamorous job, something else that can be quite lucrative and pretty easy, quite honestly, is poop scooping. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Ow! But a lot of people don't like having to clean up after their dogs in their backyard and they'll pay you handsomely to do it for them. So depending on the size of the property, the number of dogs that somebody has, you can easily be charging them 20 to 30 or even more dollars per weekly visit. And that weekly visit should only take you 15 to 20 minutes. So again, you're looking at like 60 plus dollars an hour of peace and quiet, just picking up turds in people's lawns. All right, number 19. Does that make sense to do it? 10 and nine, 19, 19. Number 19 is another one likely to ruffle some feathers, but I'm just gonna come straight out with it. It is photography and videography. Yes, yes, hold your breath. I know there's gonna be people here who I'm gonna piss off with this one. They're gonna say, oh, I got a degree in photography. I studied cinematography in school, whatever, blah, 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 blah. I hear you, I get it. I'm not knocking you. I hope you're making a good living, doing what you like. Congratulations, all the best. However, you don't have to have a degree to be a photographer or a videographer. And YouTube has shown us all that. You can learn most of the things that you need to know online and beyond that, it just takes practice. But if you can get yourself up to the point where you're taking somewhat decent photos, you can easily charge people 50 to hundred dollars for a photo shoot and some edited photos. It takes you, you know, an hour or less to do. Like dog grooming, I think it's one of those things that even if you had a formal background in it, it's not necessarily as helpful as it is just to get your hands dirty, get in the field and start trying it. Practice makes perfect. And the more you work on it, the better you'll get. And you never know, you might find something that you really enjoy doing and get paid well for. Similarly, video editing is another skill that's becoming increasingly lucrative over time. As more and more creators on YouTube find they don't have the skill set or maybe even just the time to edit their own videos, a lot of them are happy to outsource that to other people who are more proficient than they are. And you can get paid very well for it. And it's up to you to set your rates based on either the project or the amount of time, but you can get paid very well, probably well in excess of $100 an hour when all is said and done. And the better you get at it, the faster you can pump things out, the more jobs you can take, the more money you can make, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Side hustle number 21 that can earn you a nice amount of money requires something that I don't have personally, actually two things that I don't have, that is muscles and a truck. But if you have either or, or preferably both of those things, you can offer a private transporting business. There's a lot of people who will buy large items from somebody or someplace and need them brought to their home. Things like exercise equipment or furniture, and they don't have the means of moving it themselves. And sometimes it's not worth their while or they just don't feel like having to deal with renting a U-Haul and doing it themselves. And so they'll pay somebody like you to go drive to the location, pick up the item and bring it home for them. And you can easily make $100 an hour doing that, no problem, and get compensated for your gas and all 
all the rest of that. Idea number 22 is one that I've always been a little bit fascinated by, and it is professional organizing or decluttering. There are a lot of people who just look around their homes, look around their garages, and feel so overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that they have. As a minimalist, I think this would be a really satisfying job, but then as a germaphobe, I think it'd be a really terrifying job. So I guess it depends where on that spectrum you fall, but people will pay you very well, hundreds of dollars per hour to go to their home and help them systematically go through their stuff, declutter, pare down, and reorganize everything. If you're a type A personality, this is something you might actually find a lot of joy in and you can easily make one to $200 an hour doing it. So how can you go wrong there? Number 23 is admittedly a weird one. I'm gonna say that right now, and it's not gonna be for everybody, but I'm gonna categorize this as cosmetology. And it's gonna include things like doing eyebrow waxing, doing nails, manis and pedis, doing makeup, even makeup artists. The makeup artists that people hire for their weddings, for photo shoots, they don't have a four year degree. I can almost guarantee that. I went to the mall last week, I got my eyebrows waxed. The girl who waxed my eyebrows, She's just a retail employee. She's not a cosmetician. She doesn't have any formal background. She charged me $15 plus tax plus tip. It took her like 10 minutes. And there's people who offer these services from their home. They set up like a room, like a home studio, and they offer eyebrow waxing or like mustache waxing for those who need it. I think I'm good. I'm good, thank God. And there's people out there making like 50 bucks for a half hour's work all day, every day. And well, why aren't you? Number 24 is gonna go way to the other side of the spectrum, away from hair and nails and makeup, and it is gonna be offering mobile tire changes and mobile oil changes for people's cars. You don't have to be a mechanic for this. There's a kid who comes to my house twice a year. He's probably like 20 or 21 years old, his name's Josh, and he comes to my driveway, and in the wintertime, he takes my summer tires off and puts my winter tires back on, and in the spring, he comes and does the opposite. He takes off my winters, puts on my summers. I pay him $50, it takes him like 30 minutes maybe, sometimes less. And this guy is booked solid for weeks. Like he goes from house to house to house to house. He's making a hundred bucks an hour. He's got virtually no overhead beyond probably some insurance, hopefully, and uh, his own gas to travel. And he's making a hundred dollars an hour. He listens to podcasts or music, hangs out, does his own thing, swaps the tires. There's also people who do that for oil changes and other small things like that. And if you're handy and know how to change a tire, you can be making good money all winter and all spring. And finally, we made it to the end of the list. Job number 25 that pays very, very well for your time is resume writing. If you have any skill set, if you've interviewed for jobs, if you've been an interviewer, maybe you've been an employer or a manager and you know what to look for in a resume, there are so many people out there, especially right now, who are looking to change jobs, get into a higher paying field and need help revamping their resume. If you know how to do this, it's not a hard skill set. I've personally done it myself for friends before and I've helped them land jobs. There's probably somebody out there right now clutching their pearls going, I'm a professional resume writer. This is my heart and soul. It sucks to be them. They wasted their time, they wasted their money because it's not necessary. If you have landed yourself a well-paying job in the past, if you have been in a managerial position, if you know what employers look for on a resume, you can charge good money, 50, 100, $150 an hour to revamp somebody's resume, help them land a new job, help yourself get paid, and everybody's happy. Whew, we finally made it to the end of the list. I hate to tell you how long I've been recording this video for because some days I swear I can't speak English and I trip over my own tongue, but we finally made it. And those are the 25 ideas. Hopefully somewhere in that list, there is something that appeals to you or some skill that you already have that you maybe never thought about monetizing. I know that it sucks to think about the idea of having to monetize all of your hobbies and interests. And I'm not one of those people. I'm not saying you can't just do something for the joy of doing it. But if you have the ability to change your own life, to maybe even leave your full-time crappy shitty job and work for yourself and make more money, you can either choose to make a shit ton of money or you can choose to work part-time and have more time off to do the things you like and spend time with your friends and family. Because if you're earning right now 10, 20, even $25 an hour in most places in the world, it's still not a living wage. So if you can work for yourself, make your own hour, set your own rates and double, triple or quadruple your income, to me at least, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer and it's something that I think everybody should look at doing if you're not getting paid well where you are right now. If there's any side hustles or freelance gigs that you think that I missed and I didn't talk about, by all means, drop them down below if you have a side hustle that I didn't mention. Super curious to know what it is because I think I mentioned a lot of things, but if there's something else, I'd love to know what it is. Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video at all, if you found any value in it, or if any of these ideas piqued your interest whatsoever, please do me the smallest, easiest favor. I promise it's free. It'll take you one second hit that like button. Maybe also consider subscribing if you haven't done so yet. I make videos about minimalism, personal finance, side hustles, all sorts of other cool things. If you haven't followed me yet on Instagram, feel free to do that as well. It's according to Nicole, little underscores between each word. Other than that, thank you guys so much as always for watching. I really genuinely, truly appreciate it. And I will see you next week. Take care.